Hey guys, this is Raf. I'm a game designer and game design teacher. Over the years, I have published two games. The first one is Co-op Decrypted, a co-op puzzle-based platformer where you control two friends robot with unique abilities trying to escape a deadly factory they got stuck in. My last release was C4, a physics-based puzzler where you play as Barrow, a not-so-much space engineer who is in charge of gathering raw data from the environment. Now, as you know, this devlog is not about these games, but about my newest game, which is Barista Simulator. Let's get right into it. In the last vlog, I decided to cut it shorter because uh, it was getting too long. So this is the continu continuity, continuity of that other part where I was working on uh, lifting objects, and keeping them in your hands. All right, after a bit, I finally finished the holding animation. So I'm gonna switch that to complete. So here's the holding animation. So I made a little cup as a um, template, as a interactable object. So the way it works in my architecture right now is I have just a generic class called interactable. As a inherited class or a child class, I then have a pickable. These are all the objects in game. Obviously, I for now I just thought of cup and kettle, but I'll have way more. These are the objects in game that I'm going to be able to pick up in my hands. There's going to be objects that are going to be movable so that you can reorganize your cafe, like counters and stuff like that are going to be movable. And you have only objects that are just simply intractable, like the cup piles that you can just pick up a cup for the instant coffee and most ingredients. That being said, in here I created uh, my two architecture uh, classes, abstract. So I have an interactable uh, class that derives from mono behavior and I use an interface to make sure I implement the, uh, the functions. I could get rid of the interface. And then I have a pickable class that is a child or that inherits from the uh, base class, which is interactable. And in here, I pass a couple of functions or I implement a couple of functions here that I want to make sure that I have on every um, interactable objects. So I created a simple uh, cup object here and I put on it that it derives from pickable. So remember, pickable derives from interactable, interactable derives from mono behavior. So pretty much when you're a pickable, you have all of these and you also have all of these. On my simple cup, I absolutely have to do nothing except this is for um, what kind of interaction this cup has. Can I hold? Uh, can I just tap? But for now, what happens pretty much is that I can get near it. Just based on my parent classes, I can get near it. Uh, there's gonna be a little UX that appears showing me what I can do if I can hold it, if I just tap. Here, the cup is just gonna be, you can just tap it. And the result is this. Alright, yeah, so I'm gonna go and start working on this task here that is um, that whenever I pick up an object, as you just saw, um, the object should not be still considered an interactable. So we should have some sort of a condition that's to avoid having the problem where um, I can go and pick up an object. And then you can see that this object is still considered like something I can interact with in my code. So there's still the UI there, the green thing. And uh, it's gonna make me not being able to interact with other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix that now. All right, so I'm done with this task, the problem we had. So um, here's the result. So the problem we had is uh, I can look at something that is an interactable. So all of these that highlight green are interactable and I can pick up something. Um, so the way that I address this is 
whenever you, so this is the script for all pickable objects. This is my abstract class. So whenever you pick up an object, so unpicked up here is getting called. What I say is that um, I call, first of all, my singleton here, my player interaction manager, and I say, this is the object that um, you will have in your hands. Um, so I mean, this, ob this very object, so this script here. And I put a bool that I have here um, that is only gettable, should only, you can only get it publicly. And I put it to false, meaning this object is not interactable anymore because you have it in your hands. Another thing that I did is I turned off the collision whenever you pick up an object. So just before picking it up, when you're the, when, when you're in the action of picking it up, I just before I disable all colliders. Yeah, so then I call this, like I said, player interaction manager equips in hands. And this goes here on the singleton, which is on the player. And then um, I put it in my hand right here, currently in hands. Um, I found a little bug though, which is kind of annoying. I want to address right now. Um, it's the fact that um, sometimes it's hard to detect objects. See here, um, I'm trying to pick up the cup, which should be kind of easy, but it's not. It is definitely not easy. Um, as a matter of fact, it's almost impossible. All right, so for the overlap sphere that was kind of soft, I found where it was in here, my player interaction manager. I initially was looking in the prototype, was looking for, I was starting my sphere from the transform dot position, which mean uh, it meant the position of the player. But since I replaced my character with an actual um, character, his pivot point is now at the bottom. Pretty much what happened was that my radius was getting drawn from the bottom here and that was kind of annoying to find uh, things on a surface or higher ground. So I pretty much just changed that for a socket that is pretty much the hand sockets that already existed. So now I'm, ca I'm drawing that sphere, that invisible sphere from the hand socket, which is this here. That allows me to have a little bit more uh, precision on what I'm targeting. So I'm gonna gray box the um, apartment. I'm gonna explain later what that means. Uh, so your room and a basic cafe. So we can start testing the full gameplay loop later on, which is to, you know, go back to your apartment um, when the cafe is closed and manage your stuff uh, and yourself, your appearances and whatnot, and then go back to the cafe in the morning whenever you want. So after you slept and stuff like that. So I'm going to be, first of all, just uh, iterating on that, probably in Photoshop, just trying to draw some basic layout. And then I'm going to go in Unity and start grayboxing those. So this is the result here. I've been working on the kind of the environment for uh, what would be your apartment in the game. You're going to be able to either customize your appearance um, or use your laptop slash tablet slash computer slash whatever you're going to have there to manage uh, different things or order different pieces for your cafes or buy new land or a new cafe or stuff like that, upgrades. And so that's kind of going to be some sort of a hub here. Um, yeah. And then whenever you want, you go, you're going to go to sleep and um, it's going to fade and open to the morning, which is going to be uh, a different lighting and different thing. And uh, you're going to go to the cafe whenever you're ready. So this is the um, basic gray box. As you can see, it's gray, no material whatsoever. Um, and just to test the proportions, the camera. You can see that I, uh, to be able to see, I've done some sort of a cutout, like the Sims 
um, and I left some sort of a window and I cast a shadow here. Uh, so that would be, obviously there's no light in, in indoor now, so that's why it's dark. So just the light coming from the sun would bounce around and create that uh, lighting. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it here, but we're going to see each other in the next one, talking about intractables and being able to carry objects around. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. That's very helpful to us. And if you know someone who would enjoy those vlogs, feel free to share. You can also follow us on Discord or join the Discord. Follow us on Twitter and support us on Patreon to get access to the latest build of the game. Thank you, guys, and see you in the next vlog.